everyone. Uh, we're going to talk uh, today about what Jesus said in Psalm 22, verse 6, uh, where he declared, he said, I am a worm. So we're going to see what, why he said that and, uh, and possibly what it means. Now, in a few of my previous videos, I did speak about who is the real Jesus. And um, I became very aware when I read scripture about him and the woman at the well and Jesus with the woman with the blood issue and Jesus with the prostitute, that Jesus had an awful lot of empathy for women and uh, his love for Mary Magdalene um, surpassed the feelings he had for the rest of the apostles. She was known as the apostle to the apostles. Um, he even encouraged her to teach, which was um, taboo back then and um, scorned and looked down on and just not allowed. So he was breaking rules back then uh, on behalf of women. And um, then I made the correlation between Jesus shed his blood, precious blood on the cross um, so that you may have eternal life. And a woman sheds her precious blood every 28 days so that you may have life. Okay, so there's a connection between what Jesus did on the cross and what happens biologically to a woman. And I made all these connections because the Holy Spirit brought it to my attention. And now the Holy Spirit is bringing this to my attention, where Jesus in Psalm 22, verse 6, refers to himself as a worm and not a man. So let's take a look and see and get into what that worm, uh, what kind of worm it is and um, what is the, the uh, life cycle of that worm. It says here... Um, the crimson worm, it looks more like a grub worm than a regular worm, you know, not like an earthworm. Grub looks like a, a crescent like that, you know, curled up. Its life cycle reveals a hidden meaning that points us to the sacrifice of Jesus. When the female worm is ready to lay her eggs, and this only happens once in her life on this particular grub worm. She climbs up a tree or a fence and she attaches herself to it. She particularly likes a specific type of oak tree. And once the worm's body attaches to the wood, a hard crimson shell forms. The shell is so hard that and it, and it is so secure that the only way that it can be removed f from that tree is by tearing apart the body, which would kill the worm. So that protection is so powerful that that mama worm has for her babies. And under that protective shell, the female crimson worm lays her eggs underneath her body. When her larvae hatch, they remain under her protective shell and they feed off the living body of the mother worm for three days. Not only does the mother's body give protection for her babies, but it also provides them with food. The babies feed on the living, the living body of the mother. Then the mother worm dies and her body excretes a crimson or a scarlet dye that stains both the wood to which she was attached to and her baby worms. So the scarlet dye that is given off at the death of the mother stains the offspring and those offspring go off with a red color on them to represent the sacrifice of the mother. 
the sacrifice of the mother. On day four, the body of the mother loses its crimson color and turns into a snow white wax, which falls to the ground like snow. Isn't this spoken about in scripture? That the sins would be removed and we would become white as snow? In Isaiah 118, it says, Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they should be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So with this understanding of the life cycle of the worm, the crimson worm, we can see several ways in which Jesus Christ was a crimson worm. Just as a mother worm attaches herself to the tree or the fence, Jesus willingly allowed himself to be hung on a tree or a cross. In Philippians 2.8, it says, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Now, Holy Spirit drew me to this particular verse, um, and particularly where it says, and being found in appearance as a man. Now, why would the Bible put that in there? That he appeared to be a man. Were they saying that he was really a worm? Were they saying that he was really a female? Or was he saying that he was really a man? Appeared is something that we see. How we perceive it. How did we perceive Jesus? How was he perceived back then? Maybe. The time he came to the defense of all those women that were suffering at the hands of men who were promoting the rigid law. They didn't like him. He was despised. Because women were despised, they were to be controlled by men. And Jesus was helping women to escape the oppression. Escape the oppression that was, that was delivered to them by the law. That woman with the blood, 12 years away from her family and children, just because she bled. That's it, a natural biological function. Just because she bled, she couldn't see her family or children. God made her that way. Man says she was dirty and filthy, not God. So men abused her, oppressed her because they had more power than she did. They removed her from her family because she was bleeding. He healed her so she can go back and see her children. The prostitute. Let's take a look at the prostitute. Okay. They were going to stone her for adultery. Why were they going to stone her when they went out and did the same thing themselves? They were a bunch of whore masters. They did the same thing. There was a double standard there. They were persecuting the woman. So Jesus turned around and said, well, he who hasn't sinned, let him throw the first stone made them think well they did the same thing and why are they punishing her why because she's a woman that's why and because they were more powerful than she was so they could so he helped her and the woman at the well the woman at the well with the five husbands why did the woman have five husbands because men were in control of women and women were property and if women backtalked or bucked them, they would throw them out. And they had no support. Women didn't have jobs back then and earn money. Very rare. Very, very rare. And you had to be up in a social status in order for that to happen. But for the most part, it didn't. So women were property. And if a man threw her out, she had no way to eat, no shelter. 
most times he kept her ch her kids and threw her out. So now she doesn't even have her children. So she wound up finding another man who made promises to her also that he couldn't keep, took her in, and when that went south, he threw her out again. And she had to find another person. It was the only way to, to stay alive. And Jesus told her, if you drink my water instead of the water from the well, you won't have you won't you won't have this. See? Was your, here's the referring to eating the, the body of the worm and drinking the blood of the worm. Okay? We're also covered in the womb by our mother's blood, the umbilical cord, which is our source in the womb of oxygen, food, um, nourishment, everything we need to grow in the womb comes through our mother's blood, our mother's blood supply. Our mother's blood is in us. Jesus' mother's blood was in him. Those baby worms, mother's blood and fluids were in that worm, in, those, in that offspring. Okay, it all comes down to the mother. Everything revolves around the mother. And I said, in another video uh, that Jesus was one with his mother, somebody come and said, well, he, Jesus was a man. I said, yeah, he was a man. He appeared to be a man. He had the body of a man, but he was yoked spiritually with his mother. I looked up the scholars. Now, I don't give a lot of credibility to the scholars because they called women's menstruation, women's, women's period blood filthy. Okay, and God doesn't create anything filthy. The Hebrews did that. Okay, God didn't do it. God didn't make it to disgrace it. It says here, and being found in fashion as a man. Fashion is something we put on, our bodies. Fashion is our suit, our, our, our suit of flesh. So we... So he came out of the womb with the, the flesh of a man, but inside he was connected to his mother. Though he was seen and looked upon as a mere man and therefore cha charged with blasphemy, he asserted himself to be the son of God. He was more than a man and yet found and known by men in common to be no more than a man just than just such as a man uh, other than other men are and so far is true that his scheme his habit his fashion his form were like that of other men so it was like it was how he was perceived it was his coat it was his his fleshly body, not his spirit. Though he was not begotten as a man, but conceived in an extraordinarily manner by the power of the Holy Ghost, yet he lay nine months in his mother's womb, as the human fetus ordinarily does. He was born as children are, was wrapped in swaddling bands when born, as an infant is and grew in stature by degrees as men do the shape and size of his body were like other men's and he was subject to the same infirmities as hunger thirst weariness pain grief sorrow and death itself as followed just as the mother worm when crushed, excretes a scarlet dye that covers the baby worms and stains them. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. In Isaiah 53, 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. His scourging and death brought forth his scarlet blood that both washed away our sins and marked us as his own. And just as a baby worm is dependent on the mother worm for the crimson dye to mark it, a Christian depends on the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins to receive new life and be marked as his own. And this makes reference to the Last Supper, where Jesus said, For this is my body, eat it, and this is my blood, drink it. In Matthew 26, 27, it says, Then he, Jesus, took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. For the remission of sins and in 1 peter 1 18 and 19 it says knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers but with the precious blood of christ of as of the lamb without blemish and without spot And just as a baby worm is dependent on the mother worm to give it life, a Christian depends on Jesus for spiritual nourishment. In John 6, 53, 54, 55, and 56, it says, Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. And this is why Jesus said, I am a worm interesting interesting another another revelation by the glorious holy spirit uh, the connection of jesus to the woman and um i've said in the past that our holy spirit is female our holy spirit is female and um i took uh i always take a lot of heat for saying that it's a misogynistic world that we live in um, as we can see in scripture has happened to the woman at the well and the prostitute and the woman of the bleeding for 12 years and and everything that came down from the beginning of time the persecution of women women um, men disgraced and um, defined women's biological functions as filthy and unclean making them feel less of a, like a human being making them ashamed of their genitalia um, it's, it's a terrible thing that this world has done to the one who brings forth life okay and um, i want to show you something that the holy spirit showed me about the word female if you separate the prefix on female, the F-E, it means iron. And that leaves man, male, iron male. See, iron male. There's a play on the gender here, on the pronoun. Iron male, female. So um, Holy Spirit revealed that to me and I'm passing it along with you. I'm passing it along to you. Um, really interesting interesting I thank you Holy Spirit for all the um, information for all the revelation that you've given me and the guidance and um, and the courage I, I have to say the courage that you've given me 
to come on here and say these things which go up against the world. But when we love God and we commit ourselves to God and we are fully submitted to God, we have to do what God tells us to do regardless of the outcome, regardless of the consequences. We do it because God has a purpose for you when you come to Christ and you give yourself to Christ. You have a calling and there's a cost for that calling. And when the Holy Spirit reveals things to you to tell to the world, you're going to get punished for saying those things. Just like Jesus got punished for helping and protecting women. Anyway, that's about all I have for today. God bless you. Until next time.